So today, I'm talking about the kingdom. If you would turn with me, if you have your Bibles, go to the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter, and I'm going to go to the 33rd verse. When you have it, say amen. Y'all are too quiet. Y'all are too quiet. You make me nervous. I can handle a noisy congregation, but a quiet one scares me. All right. Another parable he spoke to them. This is Jesus. If you have a red letter Bible, this is Jesus speaking. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. So today I want to talk about this scripture. I want to talk about what Jesus said. He said, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto yeast. So let's talk about this. Let's get into it. So the kingdom is not a majority rules. It's not a democracy like we serve in. A kingdom is ruled by a king. When a king says something and decrees it, it is. That's it. There's no popular opinion. Nobody, it doesn't care. It doesn't matter. When it's a kingdom, the king has the final say. Amen? Amen. So, the king of kings, Jesus, is telling us something. He said, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto yeast. Yeast is never intimidated by dough. Amen? We're supposed to be the yeast. We are the kingdom of God. And the Bible says that yeast... We're, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto yeast, but we are the yeast, and yeast is never intimidated by the world. The kingdom of God inside of you is not scared of what the world has to say. The kingdom of God inside of you does not care how big the world is. We have to rule and reign like kings and princes, right? Yes. Amen. For too long, we've allowed the enemy to think that we're nothing and we're insignificant. But if you've got the kingdom of heaven inside of you, it doesn't take very much to make a big impact. The kingdom of God will make you what you're not. Yeast is never intimidated by dough, no matter how big the dough is. They say that you take one half teaspoon of yeast per one cup of flour. I don't know if you know what that is, but that's a very tiny bit compared to a whole lot. So it doesn't take much. Dough is, is always bigger than the yeast. So the goal is always bigger than the one who's seeking the goal. Amen? But yeast doesn't get intimidated. Yeast stands back and says, put me in, put me in. I'm ready, I'm ready. All the yeast wants to do is get in there. Yeast says, put me in. That dough is mine. Amen? Amen. But we sit back and say, oh God, oh God, what am I going to do? He says, the kingdom of God says, put me in. Send me. Amen? Amen. Yeast does not care how big the dough is. All yeast is concerned about is that it's not left out. It has to be put in. Because see, if the yeast is never put into the dough, guess what happens? Absolutely nothing. If the yeast stays in the packet, it never does anything. If we were more like yeast, we would go to our jobs with a different perspective. God wants you to infect your job with the kingdom. No matter how small you think you are, you have the power of influence. What God has placed on the inside of you is influential even though you don't think it is. People would kill to have what you have. People would kill to have the faith and the hope and the love and the peace and the joy that you live with. We take it for granted. The world would love to have what you have. Amen? Amen. So no matter how insignificant you think the word is that you're sharing, it's the kingdom of heaven. And the world would love to have what you have. We take everything for granted. If we were more like yeast... We wouldn't go to our jobs and say, man, I don't want to work around these heathen people. Right? We would be excited about going into the world and around heathen people so that we can share the gospel of the kingdom, right? And create a harvest because we're yeast. We are the kingdom of heaven. You would go to your job with a 
expectation instead of being demoralized or feeling insignificant or little. It doesn't matter how small you think you are, you have the power of influence whether you think it, believe it or not. Yeast can never become dough. Yeast can never become dough. That's powerful. How come as Christians we see the church becoming like the world? We can get real religious, but true kingdom will change the dough. True kingdom will change the world. Religion will get you nowhere. Relationship will get you everywhere. Yeast can never become dough, but the church looks more and more like the world every day. Yeast can never infect the dough until it is taken out of the packet and inserted into the dough. Man, we say that Christians shouldn't get involved in government. I never heard of such a thing. The kingdom of heaven should be invading the entire earth. Everywhere you go, every avenue, every job, every, everything should be invaded by the presence and the gospel of the kingdom. And that's why he's sending us. He's sending us out into a lost and dying world. Amen? Amen. So, if the yeast is never inserted, there can never be any change. If the kingdom is never preached, there could be no change in the world. Once yeast is inserted into the dough, it cannot be extracted. Once the word of the kingdom is preached, once the word goes forth, it cannot be extracted. It has to do what it was determined to do because it is the word of God. It's the word of a king. And he serves as a sovereign king. Once his word goes forth, it will perform what it was set out to do, whether you like it or not, whether you think it or not, whether you believe it or not. Amen? Amen. Yeast can never be extracted once it's released or introduced into the dough. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast. Once you release that message, once you release that word, it always does what it was determined to do. Daniel changed the kingdom. One man. One man. Esther changed the kingdom. One woman. One woman. Small and insignificant. But with the kingdom of God... Joseph changed the kingdom. One man. We keep praying for God to change things around us. And he's trying to tell us that we are the change. We are the change. You want God to change your environment? He says you change it. You're the change agent. We're so busy wanting everybody else to do it. Oh God, change this situation. Oh, help us. He said, I sent you. Why are you so quiet? I sent you. Why have you not released what I gave you? Yeast is useless in the package. It is useless until inserted. The most useless day for God is Sunday. All the yeast is locked up in the four walls of the church. Come on. We're all here, right? But on Monday, God loves Mondays. I know y'all don't like Mondays, but God loves Mondays. On Monday morning, God takes us and he sprinkles us all over the world. He sprinkles the yeast all over the world. And he begins to knead that dough and knead that dough. Because when y'all go into the world, y'all talk to him about Christ, don't you? You showing up better. (laughs) Showing up better. So on Monday morning, God sprinkles us around the world and in ungodly places on purpose. You're wondering why you're in the job that you're in and you don't want to be around those heathen people. He put you there on purpose. He put you there on purpose. 
Number one, because he loves them just like he loves you. Number one, it's not about you. He loves them just as much as he loves you. But until you open your mouth and release the kingdom message, nothing will happen. The kingdom is not afraid of the world or any situations that the world has to deal with. Amen? Amen. Another point. I love these properties because when I was doing the research, I learned so much about yeast. Not that I ever wanted to know anything about it. <laughs> yeast cannot be infected by dough. <laughs> yeast cannot be infected by dough. Listen, he sent us into the world to infect the world, not to allow the world to infect us. So true kingdom cannot be affected or cannot be infected by the world. Yeah, I learned a lot about yeast. Give me a minute. Matter of fact, give me 15. Yeast works quietly. When the yeast is inserted into the dough, it's quiet. It doesn't need a banner. I'm a Christian. Here I am. I love Jesus. Then you become more offensive than you become strategic. Yeast does not need to pronounce who it is before it walks into the dough. The yeast sneaks up in the dough, spreads itself around, and takes over. Amen? That's the way you do it. You take them by surprise. Right? Why is this serpents harmless as doves? Yeah. You're spreading the gospel of the kingdom and they don't even know it. They're getting the word and don't even know it. Yeah. You ain't got to run around and proclaim who you are. They'll know you by your fruits. Yeah. They should know you because you don't look like them. Peace works quietly. They're not supposed to know you are who you are until it's too late. <laughs> You know, yeast will teach you something else. Yeast will teach you patience. Because once the yeast is installed into the dough, it takes time for it to rise. How many know that when you got saved, you didn't get all rose up just in a minute? It takes time. It's a process. But there's one thing about yeast that I thought was very interesting Yeast does not use any outside properties to make the dough bigger. It only uses what's inside the dough and the properties of what's inside the dough to make them bigger. The kingdom of heaven is like another yeast, right? God doesn't use outside things. He uses what he placed down on the inside of you and he grows it. When you add the kingdom of God, he grows you and he raises you up. Come on. We do not fully know exactly how the kingdom works. We cannot make it show up. Well, it has always been there for a time. We did not know it was even there. The kingdom of God was working on the inside of me even when I didn't even know he was. Even before I knew who God was. The kingdom was already working on the inside of me because there's stuff on the inside of you that God placed inside of you that you haven't even tapped into yet. Amen? Amen. Getting ready. Getting ready. He's always been there. Sometimes we didn't even know it was there until all of a sudden we saw it. All of a sudden I saw a change in me. All of a sudden, I, my morals changed. All of a sudden, my perspective changed. All of a sudden, I started to change, and I didn't even know how or why. Amen. Yeast works the same way. When yeast is inserted into the dough and kneaded into it, the dough starts rising, and you can't see how or why. It just happens. When the kingdom is inserted into your life, it starts growing. Yeast is alive. The kingdom of heaven is alive. 
the kingdom of heaven will grow you without you even doing anything about it. If you allow it. If you allow it. Who would have guessed that dough could be so much more than just dough? A little bit of flour, a little bit of water, a little bit of salt. Who could have imagined that those properties could become so much more than what they actually are? Who could imagine that I could become more than what I thought I was? Who could imagine that you have more locked up on the inside of you than you even understand right now? You haven't seen your best days yet. Who could have known that these dirt vessels mixed with water could become so much more if you add the kingdom of heaven? Wow. That's powerful. I don't know about you, but that makes me want to sing. Hmm. No, I ain't singing. We can learn so many things from yeast. Yeast will teach you that you have to wait. If you want anything from the kingdom of God, he says you have to wait. Wait on the Lord. You got to wait on the yeast to do its thing, right? You got to wait on the Lord. You got to wait on the Lord to do what he wants to do on the inside of you. You can't make yeast show up and you can't make it work. Amen? You have to let it do its thing. You may have to wait for the kingdom of God just the same. You can't force the kingdom of God to come. The kingdom of God just shows up. It blows like a mighty rushing wind to and fro and you don't know where it came from and you don't know where it's going. The Bible says. The kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God is like yeast. It is already here. It's in your life and it's in this church. Amen. It's already working. Amen. It's already working. As I studied, I found that yeast, it's found everywhere. Everywhere. There's strands of yeast everywhere. On the skin of fruits and berries, on all kinds of plants, in the soil, on ants, in flowers, the nectaries, in the deep sea environments, and in countless uh, bakeries, distilleries, and all around the world. The kingdom of heaven is just like that. It's all over the world, all around the world. Everywhere you look, the kingdom of heaven is. Everywhere you look, there's yeast. Everywhere you look is the kingdom of God. View it how you want. I view it how scripture says it. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto yeast. The kingdom of God is everywhere in this world. You just have to know how to look for it. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast in your life. It may start out in a small corner of your life, but then it begins to permeate throughout your whole life. If you let it. Raising you up to more than you ever thought you could be. Isn't that exciting? It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with him. It has everything to do with his promises and his word. Isn't it funny how no matter how many times I fall down and skin my knees up and forget who I am and whose I am, he picks me back up, he dusts me off, and he says, son, that's okay, I got a fresh word. I got fresh yeast over here. I got a fresh word for you over here. He said, that's all right, I got more yeast. It's okay, I got more yeast. The kingdom of God, when it gets in you, it changes your morals, your values, and eventually your perspective. How you perceive the world around you. Amen? Amen. Instead of I, 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 me, 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 woe is me. Amen? It changes your perspective so that you no longer look, how is this going to affect me, but how, is it, how can I infect the world? 
it's time for us to learn how to infect the world. The world has infected us for too long. It's time for us to infect the world. To be like yeast. The kingdom of God starts on a very small scale and it grows and grows and grows. How many know you're not the same person today than you were when you first got saved? It might start out small, but it never stops growing. The word doesn't stop growing because it's alive. They said that yeast and the properties of yeast is alive. It's, it's a living, I'm not even going to tell you what it actually is. It's a living fermentation. <laughs> it doesn't sound good, but it tastes real good, right? <laughs> yeah. This is why the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. The kingdom gets in you and permeates throughout your whole life if you allow it to. We've spent too much time running from the kingdom when we need to spend more time running towards the kingdom. You've got more of the kingdom locked up on the inside of you than you could ever think or imagine. But if it stays locked up on the inside of you, it does no good to the world. And we've kept it locked in. We've kept it inside these four walls. It's time to start taking it somewhere else. Let's infect the world and stop allowing the world to infect us. Taking us to places we don't want to go. Doing things in our lives we don't want to do. We need to stand up and be like yeast. You can't change me, I'm yeast. Amen? Amen? Standing up for the kingdom of God. We've been too lackadaisy in our Christianity, in our faith. If this is a kingdom, then the word is true no matter what because the king said it. Amen? Amen. Then why are we so timid and so hidden and so taken back by the world? I know the world looks big. I know it looks intimidating. But your yeast, go get it. Your yeast, go get it. You have the yeast, the kingdom of God inside of you. Allow God to use you to sow into the dough. And knead it too. Knead it. You know what kneading is? It's when they take that dough and they press down and they press it in and they press the yeast in and they press the yeast in. Don't stop talking to them. Don't stop telling them what God is doing in your life. Just because you don't think they want to hear it, I don't care. They're going to hear it anyway. Y'all going to listen to me. Too much. We are intimidated by the world when we don't have to be. We are empowered by God, the creator of all things. And we have that living power down inside of us. Let it out. I'm not the only one who's called to preach. Every one of you are preachers. Every one of you are ministers of the gospel. Every one of you are yeast. Infect somebody with the kingdom of God. <laughs> Let me be clear. <laughs> with the kingdom of God. <laughs> I'm not calling y'all to get somebody sick. I'm saying... Infect them with the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Speak the word. And if you don't have a word on the inside of you, get in your Bible and get a word. It's sad that most Christians, all the studies they've done, is that one verse that I just read here today is all the scripture they'll get till next week. It's the truth. The studies that they've done says the only scripture reading they get is when they're in service. Makes me want to stand up here and read the whole Bible. Or slap you with it, one or the other. Open up your Bibles and get you a word. Get you a word, not for you, for somebody else. Maybe you don't care about yourself, but how about that lost and dying world out there that's going straight to hell? You might be their only salvation. 
you might be that lifeline that they need. Why allow the world, because it's so big, intimidate you when God created all of it anyways? He said, if you'll release the kingdom of God, I'll do things in the world that you couldn't imagine. He said, it's not about you and it's not up to you. All I asked you to do was release it. Release it. Insert the kingdom of heaven wherever you're at. Everywhere you go, preach. Isn't that what the Bible says? As you go, preach. As you go, teach. As you go, release. As you go, speak the word of the kingdom and allow the kingdom to do what it does. But we're so worried about how people are going to look at us. What if it doesn't work? What if he doesn't show up? Oh my, they're going to think I'm crazy. I don't care. It might not look like it's working, but it's working. I promise you. God's word is not a lie. God's word is not for, you just keep speaking it. And let God show up and do what he does. He said, all I called you to do was release it, son. He said, let everything else be up to me. You got to wait on it. Because once you release it, there's a waiting period. It's got to get in them. And then when it gets in them, it starts permeating throughout their life. And the next thing you know, they're calling you up, wanting to know some more about this kingdom stuff. Let me know more about this kingdom stuff. Something happened to me. Something's changing in my life, and I don't understand what it is. You got to tell me what it is. And then they come back for more, and you give them a little more, and you give them a little more, and you give them a little more. You keep needing that dough. You keep needing that dough until eventually they look like the kingdom. Till eventually it's not just a corner of their mind. It is their whole life that has been overtaken by the kingdom of God. I don't know about you, but this message is for me because I love it. I love knowing the fact that no matter how I feel when I walk off this stage, the gospel of the kingdom has gone forth and it will do what it was designed to do, whether I screwed it up, left it up, don't matter. The kingdom of God works whether you believe it or not and whether you see it or not. He's working behind the scenes. That yeast, when it's inserted in the dough, you don't see it working. You don't see nothing happening. But if you come back tomorrow, it starts to rise. Well, guess what happens when the kingdom gets a hold of you? He raises you up. The kingdom raises you up. Just like yeast raises up the dough, the kingdom raises you up. These bodies were not designed... And we were not designed to do things on our own. We were designed to be reliant on the king. Amen? We were designed to rely on the gospel of the kingdom. And this is the gospel of the kingdom. And I don't know about you, but I want to be more like yeast. Amen? Aren't you tired of being like dough? I don't know about you, but I don't like being like everybody else. I like being different. I like being peculiar. I like keeping people on their toes. They never know what's going to come out of my mouth. That's on purpose. Just give me a minute. God will give me a word. You might not like it, but it's coming, baby. You might not like it, but it's coming. And that's what it's all about. Giving your ear to heaven so that the kingdom of God can go forth. Is that not what we're called to do? We are ambassadors of the word of God. If you don't have the word of God inside of you, get it on the inside of you. Continue to read. Continue to study. Break it down. How many times have you read over this and never gave it a second thought? That's just how it is. Study the word to show yourself approved, the Bible says. Get in there and dig in it. There's so much more than what we get. Amen? Wow. And I did all that in, well, 20 minutes. I was five minutes longer than I said. I know we have a lot of events coming up. We want to infect the world with the kingdom of God. I want all of you, even the ones online who didn't make it to service today, I want all of you to serve. 
I want everybody to serve. Everybody has some kind of gift that they can serve in this house. We want to reach out to the community. I don't want this to just be about these four walls. Because that's not what it's about. But we can't reach the world on our own. We need your help. We need you to help us. We need you to serve as God has told you to. We're all servants of the Most High God. Why won't you let him use you? Today, I hope you've learned about yeast. But most of all, I hope you've learned that the, the yeast of the kingdom of God is inside of you. And you have an opportunity to serve it up to a lost and dying world. You have an opportunity to infect dough. Go on, get some. I, I know that there's some out there today who don't think they're like yeast and they might not be encouraged and strengthened. Well, I want to encourage you and strengthen you today. If you don't know Jesus Christ, I invite you to come and get to know him. Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He said, if you will call upon my name, if you believe in your heart that I am Lord and profess with your lips, then you will be saved. I invite you today to accept and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Not just your Savior, but your Lord. When he says you're like yeast, that means you got to do something. You're responsible for something. He said, I put something in you that I want to use to infect the world. The only entrance God has to this natural realm is through you. Let him use you as a vessel. Amen. Thank you all for coming out this week. I appreciate you guys. We love you. Get signed up. As you leave, there's going to be tables out back. I want you to, out front, I want you to sign up. Sign up. Do something. I don't care if you're carrying water. Do something. Everybody has gifts that can be used by the kingdom. Amen? Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for all those that came out today. And I pray for those that couldn't come, those that are online. I pray this message and the spirit of the living God would invade their house wherever they are right now. I pray, Lord God, that this message would impart into them and they would take something with them that would change their lives. And as we have prayer warriors up here up front, if you have any, anything you need prayer for, I want you to come up and get prayed. Those of you online, if this is your first time watching, type in the comments, guest. And if you have a prayer request, please let us know so we can pray for you. We want to pray for you. We want God to have your, your whole life. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all those that came out. Father, I thank you for your word. It's rich and it's true. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this house again today. Do what only you can do. Change hearts and minds. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.